Here's some important perspective that I think some Leaf fans need to hear right now, as well as all the Leaf haters. A little bit of perspective that I think has gotten lost in all the noise here in Toronto the last couple days. And here it is. Does this Maple Leaf team have flaws? Yes. Is it ignorant and idiotic to be doubling down on a core four that collectively have one playoff round win in five years? Yes. Does this core four have a history of running hot and cold and at times disappearing when it matters most? Uh, yes. But at the end of the day, the last time I checked, there's not that many teams in the NHL that can legitimately say they got four studs in their forward group. And yes, I am including Tavares in that group. Anybody who watches him play regularly, who has a high hockey IQ, knows he's still a pretty damn good player. He just takes a lot of shit because of his contract and foot speed. This Leaf team is going to live and die on the back of the core four. And really, it's a core five with Morgan Riley. But for argument's sake here, I'm just talking about the 10 million plus forwards. Hockey is certainly a team game. And the way the Leafs are constructed right now is definitely not the traditional mold we see with most Stanley Cup champions. But it doesn't mean it's not possible. Don't forget that Pittsburgh won the Stanley Cup in 2017 with Ron Hainsey as their number one D-man. Ron Hainsey. That was the year Latang was out all year. Our last two cup champs have seen Aiden Hill and Darcy Kemper in net. They played great when it mattered, but nothing really special there. Can Joseph Wool or maybe even Martin Jones, who took San Jose to the cup final not that long? Longo maybe do the same thing? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. At the end of the day, Leaf fans, we just got to hope that when the playoffs come around, this core four has enough pride in themselves to want to get the job done. We got to hope that they've built up such a disdain for losing, such a disdain for being the laughing stock of the league over and over again every year, and that their will to win and their will to prove all the naysayers and all the haters in the hockey world wrong is just a little stronger than everybody else's. Now, it certainly hasn't been that way in the past. We've definitely called their heart into question over the years. But you know, don't lose sight of the fact that there's a lot of great hockey players that had to endure a ton of playoff failure before winning a Stanley Cup. The guys like Iserman, Stamkos, uh, Ovechkin. It took those guys a decade to win. Think of all the great players that never win. Now, the last thing I'll say is this. I think there's something to be said about the fact that all these guys want to stay here in Toronto. It could have been very easy for Nealander to pull a Johnny Gaudreau and go play in Ohio. Matthews and Marner would have probably got more money in free agency. Tavares was offered more money in free agency. And despite the fact that we have shitty weather here in Toronto, a shitty tax system, you are under the gun in this incredible pressure cooker to get the job done. They want to be here and they want to be the group that finally gets the job done in this city. Maybe I'm being a little bit too optimistic here, but you know what? At the end of the day, we're in bed with these guys for years to come, so... Might as well make the best of it. Drop a comment, guys. Whatever your thoughts are, Goal Leafs go. Thanks for watching.